I'm Ben Jacobson, and I'm a salt expert. This looks like a fleur de sel to me. Super classic. The literal translation of fleur de sel is salt flour. And so salt flour really means um, it's a solar produced salt. Fleur de sel is, is typically the first salt crystal that um, forms on the surface of, of the brine um, that is collected in salt pans. Through those open air pans, um, you get biomaterial. You get biomass that um, could end up with like, you know, small chunks of wood, um, dirt, dust, even bird poop. Um, the good thing about salt is that it's a natural anti antibacterial. Generally though, obviously the majority of that, of any sort of, you know, large biomaterial is sifted out before it reaches you and you and me. To me, this looks like a, a really nice fluid cell. Um, the, there's still quite a bit of moisture in here. And that moisture is, you know, the salt is produced in widely varying areas from Italy to Spain, to France, to Guatemala. And so salts, you know, being a condensation of seawater, um, will taste like its environment. Irregularities in the salts, you know, are, are natural. It's an irregular product. It's naturally produced in open air salt pans with sun and wind and birds and, and, and um, everything else that um, we love in, in nature. Salt A in particular looks very clean and well processed. To me, this looks like a classic French fleur de sel because of how it's sifted. There's not a lot of biomaterial in here. Um, there's a little bit, of course, with, that is the case with any fleur de sel. There is um, the amount of irregularity of, of in the salt crystals is pretty small. Um, and so you have these salt crystals that are nice and compact. And then salt B to me uh, looks, um, you know, it looks very similar, of course. To me, this looks like a Guatemalan fleur de sel. Um, it looks a um, little bit less refined than, than salt A. There's not quite as much moisture in the salt. This one has a little bit more biomaterial because, uh, you know, this salt is made in open air salt pans around the world and, and it's something that um, you can't um, control and that's a good thing. You want a little bit of funk to it and that's what a classic fleur de sel is. Now try salt A first. Definitely got a nice little crunch to it. It's super round. It dissipates quickly in your mouth. It tastes very natural. Um, it's, it's a really nice salt. To me, I think this is a French fleur de sel. I would use this on steak, on hearty vegetables like roasted carrots, um, cauliflower, roasted cauliflower. I like cauliflower when it gets really dark and charred. And this is a salt that would stand up to that, undoubtedly. Okay, let's say salt B. To me, this looks quite different. A um, little bit less moisture than salt A. Let's try it. It's quite different. This is a lot crunchier. These are salt crystals that have, that have been formed a little bit faster than salt A. And the reason I know that is because um, it's a crunchier, more compact crystal. That happens when um, you speed up the salt making process. This was likely harvested during a very hot time um, versus this was likely har harvested then during a slightly cooler time when the salt crystal was forming more slowly. I think A is gonna be a little bit more expensive than B, but I'm anxious to find out. Ha <laughs> That's cool. These are both great fleur de cells. If you're looking um, for a fleur de cell that's gonna be a little bit more refined, um, that you're gonna to use to finish on your food, um, I'd look for you know, this French or, or, a, or other types of kind of, kind of similarly produced um, fleur de cells. And then this Guatemalan fleur de cell is really, really nice as well. Fleur de cell in general, is, it's, a, it's a really beautifully produced salt. It's very, very natural. It's, it reflects the environment. It's a really nice salt to have in your cupboard. Wow, two smoked salts, undeniably smoky. Salt A, definitely re really, really smoky. Honestly, it kind of smells like it's, a, like it's liquid smoke in here. Liquid smoke is simply made by smoking water. And, and collecting it as vapor and then turning it back into water. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just is, it, it kind of smells and tastes when you add it to food, it smells and tastes like an artificial smoke. The salt itself is, is definitely a kind of a coarse rock salt almost and a little bit afraid to bite into it really. It's, uh, it's pretty aggressive. Let's try salt B here. The salt is, is you know nice and light and flaky. It's definitely a really light, smoke to it and uh, most definitely a natural smoke. So I think we should try some smoke salt. Smoke salt is a great way to add a nice little bit of smokiness to your food without actually smoking something. We'll try salt A. Yep, it's a rock salt. 
uh, and it's really, really smoky. Um, the salt, oof, it's, uh, it's intense. It's really, really crunchy. It's too much. Uh, get some water. Uh, wow. I think this is a pretty, uh, pretty industrially produced smoke salt. Very likely, very likely using a, a liquid smoke as kind of a supplement to, to the flavoring. Let's try salt B here. Again, really nice soft smoke to it. It's, uh, it smells natural. It's nice. It's got a nice smoky flavor that's nice and light and kind of pleasing, but it's not like you're sucking a tailpipe or something. It's, it's really subtle and it's, uh, it's well done. In my opinion, salt B is more expensive than salt A. Salt A is, is much more kind of condensed in rock salt form. And the salt also smells like artificial smoke, truly. Wow, crazy. So 202 an ounce versus $1.36 an ounce. That's totally surprising, but um, that's good. It means that you can get a really good quality smoke salt for cheaper than you can a bad quality smoke salt. In terms of kind of what the factors are at play, we're dealing with here with, with Salt B. It's probably produced at significant enough scale. The cost can be lower. And you also look at the packaging. You might see a really fancy jar on the shelf versus a very simple cardboard box on the shelf. And in many cases, you're, you might be paying more for the packaging of the product than you are for the product itself. Looks like we have two table salts in front of us. The reason I can tell is that this salt is pretty granulated. Salt A is definitely a very fine table salt. It's free flowing for sure. If I shake it around in this ramekin, you can see the salt moving around. It's very uniform. Uniformity tells me that the salt is industrially produced, probably through vacuum evaporation. The free flowing leads me to believe that it probably has a calcium silicate or some other free flowing agent added to it. Salt B. Looks like a, a very fine salt as well, like a very fine grain salt. Definitely looks a little bit more natural than salt A does. The crystals are a little bit less uniform, which again lead me to believe that it's probably not an industrially produced salt. And although the salt spills when I shake it here, I don't think the salt has a free flowing agent or an anti-caking agent. I think this is probably a natural uh, sea salt or a natural table salt. So let's taste salt A here. It's pretty bitter. I'm getting kind of uh, some seizing up on my tongue. It dries out the spot in your tongue where you place the salt. And to me, that kind of comes across as bitter, almost like you'd have with a glass of really tannic wine. It kind of dries out your mouth in that spot and it's not particularly pleasant. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent commercially produced salt. Uh, that being said, I think there are probably better salts out there that can do the same job and, and probably taste a lot better. So salt B, I'm anxious to try as well. Salt B is uh, very light and pillowy, texture-wise. It's a really beautiful salt. Um, it, uh, there's definitely no free-flow anti-caking agents. Uh, so that's good. It's salty, no surprise. But you know what? I'm not getting that kind of bitter, tannic pull on my tongue that I did with Salt A. It tastes like the ocean. It tastes like uh, when you accidentally like, swallowed a, a gulp of seawater as a kid and then spit it out, and then you're kind of left with that briny tasting. Um, taste in your mouth that kind of tastes good. Yeah, it's, it's de most definitely a naturally produced salt. It's a decent quality table salt, and uh, I would definitely use this to season, you know, a large, large volume of food. My guess is that salt B is definitely more expensive than salt A. Okay, three cents an ounce versus 19 cents an ounce. So salt B, most definitely more expensive, 19 cents an ounce versus three cents an ounce. Really, if you think about it, how much salt do you actually use and buy on a yearly basis? So if you got to spend $7 a year, $8 a year on a better quality table salt, I would encourage you to do that. Wow, here we go. Looks like two flake salts. Flake salt is commonly also known as pyramid salt. And, and the reason for that is because that's the natural formation of a flake of salt that's formed very, very slowly. So the reason I know it's flake salt is, uh, well, obviously they're both very light and flaky. Um, this particular flake salt though is, is quite uh, coarse. The structural integrity of these, of these flakes are pretty intense. It's a very kind of thick flake salt. What I wanna look for when I'm choosing a flake salt is something that's, that's very thin and almost translucent. We can almost see through the flakes because you want the structural integrity of the flake, but you don't want to bite down on rock salt. Uh, because it's just not very pleasing. And the nice thing about flake salt is it does provide a nice textural contrast. 
So salt B is clearly very, very flaky. It's beautiful. My only complaint as a salt nerd is that this salt is pretty laden with calcium. And so what that means is that you can actually see the calcium on, the, on these flakes of salt. What this ca added calcium is going to do to the salt, it's going to give this, the salt a bit more minerality and, and ultimately a little bit more bitterness um, than you would if you had a very translucent flake of salt. Having said that, this salt is very light and flaky and very, very beautiful. It does have a lot of structural integrity, maybe almost too much with, this, uh, with the added calcium to it. Um, but it's a very nice finishing salt. It's definitely going to get you what you need in terms of adding a nice burst of salinity and in terms of adding a nice textural contrast to your dish. So salt A, um, it's certainly a flake salt, but it's definitely a pretty coarse flake salt. It kind of sticks to your teeth a little bit. That being said, it definitely has a nice, nice brininess and kind of dissipates quickly, which is nice. But I'm actually to try salt B for sure. These flakes are nice and large, full of minerals. This salt actually sticks to your teeth quite a lot as well, um, which is not my personal preference. It's a little bit bitter. These flakes are they're beautiful. It's almost as if they're machine formed. I know they're not. They're what you think a finishing salt should be um, in, terms of, in terms of its appearance. I think B is probably more expensive than A just because of the structural integrity of the flakes. All right, so B is definitely a little bit more expensive than A. Um, not a huge surprise. A is definitely a more mass-produced flake salt than B is. It has a little bit more minerality than I'd prefer, but salt B is a solid flake finishing salt. Wow, this is definitely garlic salt. Uh, if you could be here, it smells like garlic bread baking in the oven, you know, with foil wrapped around it. Garlic salt is an infused salt, and that really just means it's a flavored salt. It has flavor added to it. So it could be a garlic salt, it could be a celery salt, an onion salt. It's something that enables you to add a ton of flavor very, very easily. Garlic smells a little bit stale, to be honest. This salt is definitely a granulated salt. Um, it's, it's free flowing. Oftentimes, free flowing agents are added to a granulated salt because when you add a flavoring or, like a, or, an, or an infusion, like a garlic powder, you're adding, typically you're adding moisture and you're adding ability to condense. Sometimes even a rice flour is added to flavored salts and that's to prevent caking. That's like a natural free flowing agent. So taking a look at B here, it smells really garlicky for sure. The garlic smells kind of nutty in a way. Uh, it's, it's nice, it smells pretty fresh and rich. And the, the salt that is being used is, is definitely more flaky and definitely more kind of a uh, little bit more coarse, but there's no free flowing agents. It's, uh, you can see I shake it around and it doesn't really shake very easily. It smells really nice and garlicky, and uh, I'm excited to try both of these. So let's taste saute. I'm excited for this. This is pure nostalgia. It's garlicky for sure. It's really nice. I mean, it's, it's your classic garlic salt. It reminds me of being at home as a kid um, in a very strange, odd way. Um, but yeah, it's, it tastes good. It smells good. The salt is a little bit bitter for sure. But you know, all in all, it's kind of like your classic all-American garlic salt. So let's try salt B. It's nice. The salt definitely has a, a very light kind of flaky texture and, uh, and a really nice, rich, subtle garlic flavor. Very, very different from kind of the nostalgic garlic salt that we all grew up with, but this one's very nice. I like it a lot. Based on, on a couple of factors, number one, the fact that salt A is a granulated salt and it looks like it has free flowing agents, looks like a commercially produced typical salt. I'm guessing it's gonna be salt B that's gonna be more expensive than salt A. I was right. So salt B is definitely a little bit more expensive. 262 an ounce versus 28 cents an ounce. I think each salt has its purpose. Garlic bread for the family for you know a big cookout. Standard garlic salt is probably just fine when it's raining and cold outside and you just wanna come home and make a quick dinner. I would probably go with salt B. It's gonna give you a lot more flavor, a lot more texture, a lot more deliciousness in your meal. Having said that, I think both salts serve a different purpose and each stand on their own. Great salt should be used not only every single day, but at every single meal. There's no reason that you should go through life using just low quality salt. You have to have it to physically survive, so why not have the best?